I did law, which is a little bit different because we talk a lot and we, it's a lot of reading. So I went to CUNY John Jay, which I highly recommend, um, simply because you want to save your loans for law school because that's very, very, very expensive. So I majored in criminal justice. You really could major in whatever you want because you're going to take the LSAT, which is a law school admission test, and it's required by pretty much every school in New York, every law school. Um, there are schools that take you without it, but they're not ABA, which they're not credited, and you don't want to go to those schools. They're like, they just don't even count, really. Um, I went to uh, Toro Law School for law school, which is in Long Island. It's a really good school. I would recommend it. It's a pie. Um, you don't really need to take any specific classes because, like I said, you're going to take the law school admission test. The test is very difficult, so if you guys are planning on doing law, you might want to study for it because that's the test that the schools use to give you scholarships, and that's, the, you know, what, that's what they look at in order to accept you. So the average is 150. The test is out of 180. Um, then you go into law school, and it doesn't end there. After you graduate, so you have to take the license the licensing exam, which is the bar exam. It's two days, you can't practice without it. So, you know, you're pretty much not an attorney until you're admitted. And the bar exam is just one component of it. You have to take an ethics test, you have to take the New York portion of the bar exam, and you have to go through an interview called character and fitness. So until you pass all those and you have your law degree, you can't be an attorney. Um, the good thing about law is that now they adopted a new test so the bar exam, now if you pass it, you're licensed in several states. Like you can practice in Jersey, you can practice in New York, whereas before, you would have to take every state's licensing exam, and it's, it's very difficult, obviously. Um, like I said, law school is very expensive, so if you're really going to do it, you might want to be a paralegal first during law school, just on the side. Feel it out, see if you like it. It's a lot of reading, it's a lot of time that you're not going to see your family, you're not going to see your friends. Um, you really want to think about it before you make that type of commitment. The job market right now is not the greatest. Um, a lot of law schools, what they tend to do is the big law firms come onto your campus your last year of school and they interview a whole bunch of people. So you put in resumes for everywhere you want to work and then they call you back if they're interested and then you get interviewed. Some of them offer you a job in your third year of law school and just so you guys know, law school is three years in addition to your four years, so seven years altogether. And they offer you a job and you work pending your, you know, your bar results. The job market, like I said, is not great, but it's possible. You just have to work really hard. You have to stand out from the rest of you know, your, your peers. Law school is very, very competitive. So you got to be able to compete. You're not only competing with people in your school, you're competing with people from other schools. And the law schools are ranked, so, you know, there's schools that are better than the others, and you have to stand out among all of them to get a job. Um, as I work now for a law firm in Long Island, and what you do, you're doing a lot of writing. So you're writing motions to the court, and the thing is that because you're writing to the court, which is pretty serious, you got to also be very careful in how you write, you got to meet deadlines. It's not one of those things where you could just slack in. It, you have to really be on top of it. And you're dealing with people and you're dealing with their lives and it's money involved. And law, there's different areas. So I do civil, which means, you know, we sue people, we get money, but there's criminal where you defend people and it could be you're defending or you, you know, you're suing. So there's two sides. Um, there's corporate, which is a little bit more difficult to get into. Um, there's real estate, trust, trust in the states where you're doing people's wills and selling, you know, the, just different areas. I mean, it's not ending. So the good thing is that you can see what you like in law school and just specialize in that. You really aren't specializing because the bar exam covers everything, so you have to know everything for the bar exam. But when you come out of law school, you can see what you like and just work for that firm. So I hope you guys consider it. Sama so speech language pathologist, have, has anyone heard of that? No?
Yes, a little bit? Okay. So basically what we do is we treat and diagnose people that have disorders or any kind of like language problems. So basically like with students that have lisps or basically phonological disorders that they can't say the S sound or the Z sound, things like that, we basically treat them and assess them. We also do a lot of like, we have a lot of stuttering. People that have um, problems with stuttering, we help that we diagnose it and we treat them. We also do, um, we also have a lot of patients like in the hospitals that have strokes. So we also treat them and see what, the, what kind of strokes they have, if it's language, if, it is, if it's aphasia, or if it's a TBI or any other stroke, we actually treat them and we assess them. And also people that have dysphagia that, can't, that have trouble with swallowing, that's what we do in the hospitals as well. Um, I work for a school, so we do it with a lot of uh, language problems. So basically my undergrad is I did four years of undergrad and then two, two and a half years of master's. So I had to get my master's in order to start working. Um, and then after that, you have to study for your license. So after you do your license, um, then you can start working and work in any field that you want. You can either work in the schools or in the hospital, or you can work for early intervention. So working with the little babies, so you help them and you treat them as well. Um, basically, that's from zero to three. Um, so you can just deal with a very large group of people from little babies to adults. And yeah, I mean, it's a very competitive field in school. Like you always have to do, you know, really do well. You learn, um, do a lot of anatomy and sciences and also language and culture backgrounds. You always have to keep that in mind. I went to Long Island University. I did both my, mas my bachelor's, my master's there. And it's basically, um, bachelor's was a four year program. Basically you do a lot of the stuff like sciences and math. You just basically have to take the undergrad requirements. And then also for speech, you do all the speech uh, requirements, which is still a lot of anatomy and a lot of sciences and some math classes as well, um, and culture classes as well. Um, and then master's is two and a half years. For LIU, I know most programs is just two years. Uh, hi, my name is Sandra, and I am a bio major right now. In the process of getting my, well, in the process of being a BA, and I graduated from Bayside High School three years ago. And basically to be a PA, you just need to get your bachelor's in, well, whatever you want to get. Like, it doesn't matter what major, but like, you have to take some science prereq classes like bio, well, bio, ergo, AMP, all these stuff, like microbiogenetics. And being a PA, basically, you well, you have to be supervised by a doctor most of the time, and you will, you treat patients, you write prescriptions, you make diagnosis, all these stuff. And starting rate salary is like around 90,000. My only thing that I would really recommend for you guys is just try to figure out what you really wanna do early. Because for me personally, that that's the one thing that I really didn't have someone to tell me. Like I, I still, first year of college, I didn't know what I wanna do. I had like all these ideas in mind, I had no idea. But if I made that choice, like senior year of high school, I would have, well, I would have applied to many PA schools and that would save me two years. But, well, it is what it is now. And hopefully I will be graduating from Molloy College this next year. And then I will be going to PA school and my number one choice is, is Hofstra, but LIU, they have the program as well. St. John's, they have a program for seniors that you can apply to and it's only four years. You don't, you don't have to be like six and seven years to get the, your degree. And that's it. Macaulay Honors, uh, the Honors Program at CUNY. I'll talk about a few things. So I, um, I studied at Macaulay Honors, great program. Uh, it's the Honors College at the City University of New York. That means you could study in any of the eight supported campuses. I studied personally at the City College of New York, where the Sophie Davis Program is also held. I studied biomedical engineering, great program. Anyone here interested in biomedical engineering? Hands up. Wonderful, great program. Best thing about it is that you get to learn a little bit of everything and uh, you become a problem solver. Uh, I'd love to talk more about it if you guys are interested. CUNY's, uh, the honor program is really good. They give you a free laptop. Uh, they give you free, I got to travel like four times. I went to Egypt, Dominican Republic, India, all over because they gave me free money to do so. So it was awesome. Uh, I really recommend everybody should apply. You have to take the SAT. You have to do well on the SAT. You have to have good grades. But if you get in, they treat you really, really well and it's really awesome. So after I graduated, um, as I said, I studied biomedical engineering. I went a non-traditional career path route 
even though I was supposed to go to medical school. I decided to start my own company, working in biomedical engineering field. I created a technology, and now I'm working on commercializing it. It's great, because I have my own job, I do my own thing, I'm uh, my own boss, but it also is, as Mina spoke earlier, incredibly stressful, exhausting, and if you don't have the support network, which we do have here, if you don't have that, it can be, uh, it could really take an emotional and physical toll on you and the people around you. That being said, I'd love to talk about any of those things, biomedical engineering, uh, the CUNY College, or entrepreneurship. If anybody wants to talk, you have my number, I'm around, feel free. Hi, my name is Sylvia, and I'm an interior designer. Um, I'm going to start off by Egyptian misconceptions about my career. The first thing is I don't just pick pillows because they're cute or it's a sweet curtain. That's not what we do. That's a decorator and decorators don't really need any educational background. Um, so no, interior designing is really focusing on how a space functions. We fix this guy's mistakes who is an architect. Um, <laughs> Um, but we focus on how a space functions, how people react to certain areas, how people react with each other, and only like 30% of our job is really picking color and furniture and all of that. Um, we also learn about codes, what's allowed by like law and health, what's allowed to use and what materials you shouldn't use because it affects people medically. And then you have to go to these guys. Um, Another Egyptian gender, Egyptian misconception, it's a gender limitation. This is not a girl's only career. There are a lot of guys in it that are normal. Um, so feel free to go into interior design, it's okay. Um, the third thing is you don't really have to be so good at drawing. Um, this is the 21st century. We use a lot of programs and the computer sort of takes over and it helps you create renders, which eventually our clients need. So um, educationally, it's a four-year program. I went to New York School of Interior Design, which was in the city, but I know there's also Parsons or FIT and a bunch of other schools that offer interior design or interior architecture. Um, after, interior, after going through the four years, you kind of learn about different things. So there's residential or commercial, which is like stores, malls, planes. Um, or hospitality, which is like the medical centers, hospitals, clinics. And in, two design, in, sorry, in the four-year program, you kind of, it sort of helps you realize what you want to focus on, if you want to focus on something. Oh, and after working, oh, you can do a master's if you choose to like focus on a specific area in interior design. Otherwise, you can just work as a general, all areas, whatever projects you guys get. And then after working two years full-time, you apply for your interior design license, uh, which is always a great thing to have um, on your resume. And the plus side, um, money making, it's, you can start between 30 and 50, and obviously there's always place to grow, and you can, it's not unheard of that you can make 150 or 200 thousand dollars a year. There are a lot of rich people and it's not a career where you're not going to make money. Uh, and the also plus side is you're not going to leave sc school with like a million dollar loans. So that's a great thing. And that's it. Thank you.